Last week, Figma held its annual config event and there were quite a few Figalicious announcements. So instead of watching hours of footage to get up to speed on what has happened, let me summarize it all for you. Now, if I really had to boil it down and summarize the theme of all the updates, I would say Figma is bringing the design world and the development world closer than ever before. Now with that said, let's get started with the most basic updates and then slowly work our way up through to the bigger and badder features. First up, we have the brand new font picker. Previously, opening up the font list would look like you're staring at a family portrait of 100 twin siblings. They all look exactly the same. Now, if you go ahead and select some text, open up the font list, you get a preview of the font, Chef's Kiss. Nice. Then we have the file browser redesign. If your Figma account is drowning in hundreds of projects, then this feature is for you. If you hit the home icon in Figma, it takes you back to your dashboard. And now in the top left corner, you will have a search bar that will help you find any file that you are looking for. This is great, especially for those who are like me, who are working on hundreds of different projects and you are looking for a specific file. Then we have an update to auto layout. Previously, we weren't able to set minimum widths, heights, and also the ability to wrap auto layout content when needed. That meant our responsive designs were never truly realistic and sometimes they would feel a little broken. Now let me show you how it's all changed. Now let's take a look at this very quick design. We have three columns of content. And as I go ahead and expand and reduce it, you can see that the content will scale accordingly. Now with the latest update, what we can do now is we can automatically wrap content when the width of the canvas or the viewport is below a specific measurement. What do I mean by that? So take a quick look at this design. Each column we can see is around 340 pixels in the top right corner. So let's say when each column becomes 300 pixels wide, we want to make sure that if there is not enough space in the viewport, as we start to reduce the width, they will start to collapse. Let me show you how we can do this. So we're going to go ahead and select all three cards. In the top right corner, under the width, we can add a minimum width. So this is the smallest width that this box or this container can be. It won't get any smaller. So we can set that to 300. And then when we select the wrapping auto layout component, we can set that to wrap, which is the new update um, added to auto layout. And now if we go ahead and increase the size, nothing happens. But once a container hits 300 pixels and it can't fit inside this container, it will start to wrap. So as you can see, we wrap, right? And then if we go once again, it's gonna wrap again. So now we can truly create responsive designs within Figma because we now have access to wrapping in auto layout and we can also set the minimum and maximum width and height of all our elements. Then we have variables. Oh yeah. Variables are an absolute game changer in Figma. Take a look at this. Dave Williams, a designer and a developer from Melbourne, Australia, built a fully functional Flappy Bird game in Figma with the use of variables. The concept of variables can allow designers to create highly dynamic prototypes and here's how. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at this design over here. We have a greeting message that says, hello, regular user. We have a credit amount according to this uh, regular user. And then we also have two cards that display two of my online courses that I have around Figma and also practical user research. So let's say in this prototype, we want to design a prototype that emulates the experience for a regular user, which means someone who has never bought one of my courses or a pro user for someone who has purchased one or two of my courses. The goal here is that we want to create a prototype where we have a unique or custom greeting based on what user type they are. We also want to be able to create a prototype. The courses will have a different price amount based on what type of user they are. So if they're a first time user, a regular user, sorry, and they've never purchased my course, they'll have to purchase the course at full price. Now, if they're a pro user, meaning that they've purchased a course previously, we'll have a different set of pricing. Now, we only need one set of designs to achieve all this. 
and let me show you how. So the first thing we need to do now is actually in the design panel, head over to local variables. Just make sure you have not selected anything because once you select something in Figma, the design panel will open up, but it's according to what you select. Just make sure you select nothing first. Then you head over to local variables, click open variables, and I want you to go ahead and go create variable. And because the first thing we want to make dynamic, because remember a variable just means something that can be variable. It means that it can be dynamically changed. We want to update a string. So this is some text. Regular user is a text element that we want to use the text string. And what we want to say is we could name this whatever we want. It could be user type, right? Or even user role. And in the first column, we want to have regular user. And we might want to say regular user for this. And if they're a super user, we want to say super user. And if I go back to my designs and I select the regular user, over on the right hand panel under design, I can select this new little icon called applied variable. Once I select that, I can go ahead and assign this piece of text or this text element to the user role variable. Once I do that, you can see that this little tag will pop up. So what happens is if I go ahead and select variables and I hit shift space on my uh, keyboard, you can see that the prototype will show what we have just created, but nothing has changed. But if I go ahead and I just close this prototype and I close the variable panel and I duplicate this screen. And if I go ahead and change on the right hand side, the customer type to super user, you will see that this will dynamically change the greeting message based on the customer type that we have selected based on the variable. Now, this might not look like a lot, but in the next update, I'm gonna walk you through how this can be extremely powerful with mathematical operators implemented into our prototypes. Now, beyond overriding text values, variables allow you to dynamically modify Boolean, color, and number values as well. That probably makes no sense to you at all. So let me show you what I mean. Following on from the example before, we've got an experience for a regular user and also a super user. But remember, variables allow you to change anything from color, text, number, and also Boolean options. So let's just imagine for the super user, we actually want the starting credit amount to be $1,000. And maybe we also want the the price of each course to be 50% off based because they're a super user. So without having to edit our designs, we can actually go to our local variables once again, and under the create variable, we can go ahead and change the number. And for the number, we might say we want to update the credit amount. For the regular user, we want them to start on 500, but on the super user, we want them to start on 1000 uh, credits. Then we also want to go ahead and change the pricing of the courses based on what user type they are. So we might go ahead and create a variable called number, and we might ass assign this name to be Figma Masterclass. And for the regular user, it's going to be $300, no discount, and $650 for the research course. Then we want to go, oops, sorry, uh, super user would be $150 because it's 50% off. Then we create a new variable, another number, and this might be research masterclass. This will be 650 and then super user will be 325, just like that. Now, we also want to go ahead and maybe create a variable for a color, okay? So we might just call this background color. And for the regular user, we want to use the same color as we've got in this design. So 0E0E0F. And just for an example sake, for the super user, we want it to be, let's just say, a little bit more blue. Just this crazy blue, just for an example sake. So if I go ahead and close that, we can now assign the variables to these text elements and they will automatically update for us. So let's go ahead and assign them accordingly. So I'm gonna hold down command and select this uh, text over here, um, select assign this variable, and we're gonna call this credit amount. Then I'm going to go ahead and assign the Figma Masterclass, right, to the Figma Masterclass course. Then I'm gonna assign the research price to the research masterclass, just like that. Under this frame over here, this experience, because we've already assigned this customer type to super user, I'm gonna go ahead and select the 500 credit amount. I'm gonna assign this the credit amount and it will automatically change to a thousand. I'm gonna change the $300 pricing. I'm gonna assign it to a variable, which is the Figma Masterclass. And then I'm gonna do the same for the practical user research. 
as you can see, dynamically, without having to update any design, we can go ahead and really manage all the variables, all the designs with this mini little database of variables. So if I wanted to update the credit amount for a super user to maybe 800, that will automatically change. Alongside variables, you can now use conditional logic and mathematical expressions to make dynamic prototypes even more dynamic than the previous state of dynamic prototypes, if that makes any sense. Okay, let me show you this instead. Oof, so this one is going to be a juicy one. Now, based off the previous example, let's say in this prototype, we now want to go ahead and create a dynamic experience where if I'm a regular user with $500 in my credit and I hit buy now, we want to dynamically deduct $300 from the $500 and display it here. And then for the super user, we want to take $800 minus the 150 and dynamically put it over here. So without having to touch the design or change the design in any way, we can use mathematical operators. Whoa, what does that mean? Let's go ahead and take a look. So what we're gonna be doing is, we're gonna go ahead and select the buy now button and under prototype, we can go ahead and hit the plus icon and on click of this button, we can go ahead and select the drop down. We can set a variable and we can set the variable of the credit amount, right? Which is 500 to be the credit amount minus 300, but we don't need to type in 300. We can select the Figma masterclass variable from here. So what we're doing is once again, on click of this button, we're setting a variable, which is the credit amount to be the credit amount, which is $500 minus $300, which is the Figma masterclass amount. So if I just hit enter, whoops, if I just click out of that and I hit close and I go ahead and select variables and I hit shift space on my keyboard and I increase the size of this prototype. If I now go ahead and hit buy now, we have automatically updated the credit amount to 200 based on those mathematical operators that we've assigned to that trigger. So if we go ahead, close this prototype and do the same thing for the variables over here. If we go ahead and double click on this button, so under prototype, under interactions, I'm gonna hit plus and on click, I can go ahead and set a variable for the credit amount. And I'm going to update the credit amount to be the credit amount minus the Figma masterclass price, which is 150 now. Select outside, close this. And if I go ahead and click variables, shift spacebar and open this up if i go ahead as a super user with 800 dollars in my account i'm going to buy the figma masterclass course at 50 percent off we can update the credit amount dynamically and this is just scratching the surface i know you're pumped i am too but let's keep going another new update is the expansion of the sections feature now what the hell is that well i've talked about sections previously in another video but this time around, there's even more to it. So let's dive in and see how sections all works. So with this example, let's take a look over here. We have a page design for courses, and then we have another design for blog. So if we wanna go ahead and start to let developers know that these pages are ready to be developed, we can go ahead under the frame icon, we can select sections or shift S on your keyboard. We can drag two sections down we can call this courses just to let them know that this section is for courses or these page of pages are for courses there we can select the sections again and we can wrap this blog design with a blog section now it doesn't end there because if we go ahead and let me just move this further down you can now see that there is a little icon right next to the section title now dev mode is probably just as big of an update as variables and operators combined times two with the cherry on top. Dev mode is a new space in Figma for developers to help them translate designs into code so much faster, but it's actually pretty cool. Let me show you. If you select that, that will mark this entire section as ready for development. And if you go ahead and select the blog one, you can see that if I select this icon, it is also ready for development. This little update is really a wormhole into something so much bigger. Once you've gone ahead and marked these as ready for development, you can actually go in the top right corner, turn on development mode. And this is something a little bit more for developers themselves. 
Now, this whole dev mode is built for developers to really supercharge their workflow. Now, without all the distractions of Figma, they are now in a mode that it's dedicated to help them build designs so much faster. So on the left-hand side, you can see that we have the two different sections and it will automatically move you towards those sections. On the far right-hand side, you can see that it's taken a lot of learnings from those tools where you upload or you sync your designs to them and developers can now really find everything that they need in terms of code, colors, assets, be able to export assets out from Figma all within one place and keeping it really tidy without having to have them convoluted within Figma's functionality. Now, if you're a developer, you'll probably love this one as well. You can now sync dev mode with VS Code which means you can code with the Figma designs right beside you. All you have to do is install the Figma VS Code plugin. Now, let me show you how this all works. If you are a developer, you are going to love this one. So following on from dev mode, if you go ahead and select any section and you go, whoops, let me go ahead and select that. And you go up in the top right corner under courses, under three dots, select that, open the VS Code, this will dynamically select or open up your designs from Figma into VS Code. Over here, you can dynamically select any component or element and you get access to all production ready CSS and code from here. And you can go ahead, copy, paste, job done. How good is that? Last but not least, the one we've all been waiting for. AI is coming to Figma. Figma announced they acquired Diagram.com. The Diagram.com team have been experimenting with a ton of different AR workflows within Figma. They've built various Figma plugins and extensions, but with this acquisition, the entire team and all existing projects will become integrated into Figma. Now here are three sneak peeks into what you can expect. Now first, we can see that AI will be integrated into FigJam to help us summarize notes and insights. Now this is extremely advantageous as this would streamline the need for us to take manual notes. Now obviously we will still need to clean up and polish them, but a lot of the grunt work will be done. Then we have AI helping generate predefined components for us in our workflow. AI will, in Figma, will gain contextual knowledge of what you are looking for based on the designs and based on the surrounding nodes. And it can generate them for you. And finally, AI is seen helping developers write production ready code. I'm so excited to dig into the details of these latest updates because Figma is really bridging the gap between designers and developers. And I genuinely believe when designers are able to understand fundamental code concepts, it really is a superpower. So let me know in the comments below, which update are you most excited about? Now, if you like this video, make sure to gently smash that like button, subscribe for the Die Hard fans. And if you want to continue learning, you should definitely check out this video. And with that said, I will see you in another video very soon. And